very early age, uh, I, I decided that law looked like it would be fun. Uh, I was into debate and, and argumentation and things of that sort. My mother was sure that uh, <laughs> I was slated to become a lawyer. No, I had no idea. I just sort of blundered into law school and, and, then, and then I got interested in international law and, and those kinds of things in law school. And then I was lucky enough to be asked by this professor to, to work for him. And, uh, and then it kind of went from there. But at some point, I talked to one of the professors I had there and they said, Tom, maybe you ought to go to law school first. You have more options. I thought, okay. So it was a tortured route, I think. It was a... I really was searching for something where I could make a difference, um, where I could use reading and writing to actually change someone's life. And I didn't think writing for the uh, English Journal or whatever it would be would do that. So I had a notion that if I went to law school, I could use the talents that I had in, in reading, writing, and, and, and working with people to make a difference in the world. Hunch. I went to law school on a hunch. I just thought it might, I might enjoy it. Uh, I, I thought I had done everything I wanted to do in science. I thought I had certain limitations there. And I thought, well, I might enjoy law better. So uh, I had uh, to write an essay as to why I wanted to go to law school, and I said basically, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just think it might be a good idea. <laughs> and it turned out to be a good idea. It was the Vietnam War time, and um, the protests were active. I was involved with protests, I, you know, in, in various cities, Washington, for example, in 1970. I slept in a basement of a, a church, uh, and, uh, you know, it was... It, tear gas everywhere. There were mass arrests. Uh, when we marched uh, around the White House, there were buses uh, stationed around the entire White House. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a very heady time. Um, and, you know, the, the lawyers were pretty important. They were important people in, in working with the demonstrators and protecting the demonstrators. So I always tell students, uh, you just got to be open for possibilities. Uh, things may happen, and you'll uh, just have to react to them. I, I, was, um, I was going to be a prosecutor, and I had a job lined up in the uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts uh, prosecutor's office uh, in, in Middlesex County. And uh, they, back in the old days, they were closed for the summer. The uh, placement office said, well, you, you want to do something for the rest of the summer? And I said, sure, what is it? And they said, well, they see NACP Legal Defense Fund is looking for someone for the summer. And uh, I said, who are they? Uh, and they explained that there was, uh, it had been headed by Thurgood Marshall and now headed by Jack Greenberg. And they did a lot of Supreme Court work. And uh, I said, sounds interesting. So I went down. And uh, as <clears throat> they, they put me to work immediately on a Supreme Court brief. Uh, they put me in an office and they gave me a record that high and they said, write the brief. Pr prior to getting that offer, that offer, I hadn't really focused very much on what was happening in the South. I, I was just a you know, kind of local kid in Massachusetts, going to do local prosecuting, and all of a sudden this opportunity opens up. But it was a real culture shock, of course. You, I felt like a spy behind enemy lines. I mean, here you, you're going around and you're seeing all these big signs saying white, colored, uh, and you think, wow, I mean, this is really, this is real. I see law as kind of applied political science or applied philosophy or applied history, and it's real. It's not like you're just studying history for the sake of the past, but you're trying to get insights from history, philosophy, and whatever for the, for the uh, sake of dealing with current day problems. There are few people in Maine as aware of the day-to-day -day of, of life in uh, Jerusalem, Palestine, the West Bank, uh, areas in proximity to these areas as Jim Friedman. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, uh, where he felt he could make a contribution and where I think he has made a contribution. Well, it was really accidental. I, I, uh, I was working in New York in a regular law job and, and uh, my wife and I really liked New England and I wanted to be in, in law teaching. So I wrote to a couple of law schools and this was just the first place I got a job. When I came here, I was really impressed by the, uh, you know, the people that were on the faculty. Ed Godfrey was the dean at the time and there were some really, really 
good faculty members. And the school was just starting out, so there was a kind of a sense of excitement in trying to build the school. And within, I don't know, three or four years uh, after coming here, I had some good offers to go to other places, uh, you know, more prestigious places, but I decided not to do that because I really liked the situation here. Uh, the dean of the law school, Kim Van Roth, was a neighbor of mine, and um, they needed someone to teach antitrust in 1978 before I came here full time. And he approached me because I had been doing antitrust prosecutions um, in the Attorney General's office and asked if I would like to teach antitrust as an adjunct. I said, you know, after talking to the people at the AG's office, uh, I agreed and I taught it. And I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. And the students seemed to like it. And there was an open position at the law school the next year. And they invited me to apply for it, won the competition, and was given a visitorship for one year, um, and uh, decided I'd give it a try. And that was 36 years ago. Mr. Fluke, uh, a lawyer that I had worked with on a case involving Indian fishing rights in the Northwest, on the Columbia River, was teaching here. Uh, and he gave me a call one day and said, uh, we have an opening here at Maine, are you interested? And I said, I'll try, I'll come up and talk to the folks, and uh, that was it. Getting into teaching was an accident because I got a call one night from a former professor that said, Maine is looking for a visitor, <laughs> are you interested? I said, sure. There aren't a lot of people in each one of the fields, so when they lost him, they were looking for a commercial law person, and I was lucky enough to get the job, and that's how I got here. Uh, one of the reasons I've stayed 42 years is because it's a, a very supportive environment. There was uh, a real sense of, of community and camaraderie about the place. Being small and, and collegial, the professors are supportive of the students, uh, the professors are supportive of each other. This was going to be the job I was going to stay with for, for my life. I have taught at a lot of other places during my time here. I've been a visiting professor at some pretty decent law schools and I've been able to compare the students that I get at these law schools with the students here and I put our students up against the student body anywhere. I was the advisor to the International Law Moot Court team, it's called the Jessup Competition, it's one of the most important uh, uh, interscholastic uh, moot court competitions and our team from coming from this little law school in 1974 and 1977 won the uh, Northeast Regional Round and then went to the finals and we beat teams like Harvard and Columbia and you know Yale and those schools and it was very very exciting to be part of that and and um, and so things like that just made me feel that you know I like to be here. Um, I've, I've found conscientious, eager, bright students. And uh, you know, that's, that's, um, that makes teaching a delight. When you win a case, you settle a, a dispute, it's kind of an immediate, you get an immediate reward from that. And teaching the gratification uh, is felt later, I think. You, know, you hear, because sometimes the students who you know, are cussing you up and down are the ones that at the end of the day say, you know, I'm, I'm glad I went through that. You know, even though I didn't appreciate it at the time, I'm glad I went through it. I got a letter once from a, a, you know, a recent graduate who, who wrote me to thank me for my willingness to tell him that his work wasn't good enough and for pushing him harder. And now he's a partner in a you know, big law firm in Portland. Um, and, you know, uh, I appreciated the fact um, that, you know, he, he took the time to tell me that. Um, and that, those are my accomplishments, you know, one student at a time. Uh, my greatest accomplishment is the feeling that a great many students have, have had a good foundation and uh, been able to teach themselves what they needed to know. It's really a high privilege to teach law students and because uh, you, you can do so much good. Uh, and uh, that's why it's a great and very satisfying career. You know, Professor Friedman it really made a huge impact on my life. He's one of the reasons why I had the courage to start my own law firm after law school. Just being there as this, um, this mentor for students and always willing to do that. He could drop everything to talk to a student about, you know, constitutional law or a personal matter, and he really did care. Uh, to him, the school rose and fell. It began and ends with 
teaching men and women the law. I think what I'm most proud of is not, nothing specific, but just, the, just you know, coming in here day by day, doing the classes, preparing the classes, working with the students, talking with the students. Very, very happy that, that somehow, uh, you know, I've been able to, you know, work with these people to help them, uh, you know, achieve things that, that, uh, you know, that, that uh, they wanted to achieve. It wasn't enough for me to do it myself, because how many lives could I change just one person? no matter how well I did it, I thought if I could, if I could help 100 students a year get better at doing that and changing people's lives, look what I will have done by the time I've had 20 years, let's say, at the law school. All the lives that will be changed by those 100 students that learned how to be better writers and communicators in my class, I have a little part in that. And um, that means so much to me. And I, I think that was what I was heading for back in college when I thought I want to be a lawyer.